A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Shiloh, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. The rabbi has indicated that it is important that Jews be familiar with the correct pronunciation of their ancestral language. Can the rabbi please elaborate regarding the correct pronunciation of the different consonants? Let me begin by stating that the Hebrew language, as a result of the very lengthy Galuth exile amongst the nations and their different languages, many uh, communities, many parts of the Jewish world uh, lost their ability to pron pronounce uh, the Hebrew language properly. This is first of all self-evident. It is a given that if a person lives in countries where the vernacular, the spoken language, is very different from the uh, Hebrew language and its essential characters, sounds, uh, consonants, vowels, etc., it goes without saying that the Jews over time will run into serious trouble when it comes to pronouncing and, and maintaining a correct understanding of their ancestral language, of Lashon HaKodesh, of Hebrew. Apart from the fact being uh, self-evident, this is also written by the Abetz, and I wish to quote to you from the Abetz, the beginning of his Sidur. Uh, this was written nearly 250 years ago. At the very beginning of the Hakdamah to Sidur, Beth Yaakov, he writes as follows, Hadibur wahalashon, when it comes to our speech, hisiruha me'ikim, it has suffered greatly, borach galuthanu hakasha, during our very lengthy galuth. And he goes on to say, nosaf leze kol medina u medina shenafosa bahan umathanu ha'adina, in all the different countries where our nation has been scattered, all the different countries have different languages with different pronunciations, different sounds, different sets of sounds. Uh, and this has caused a great uh, amount of damage when it comes to the Jewish people's understanding of their language in many countries uh, where the Jews found themselves. As he goes on to say, that is, in brief, what the Abetz has to say on the subject. So, this is the beginning of our discussion. What, therefore, should we be looking for when we wish to come to terms with the facts and the true nature of the Hebrew language? We have to understand, first of all, that Hebrew is a Semitic language, and therefore it is most similar to other Semitic languages. The other main Semitic languages that we can mention in this context are Aramaic, which is the closest language to Hebrew, and the other is Arabic. Both of these languages are close to Hebrew, both in their uh, vocabularies in many respects, and very definitely in, their, in the sound of the language, and, that, and the consonants and vowels used in those languages. That is not to say they are identical, uh, Arabic, for example, as I, I will explain in a moment, uh, is not identical to Hebrew in every respect when it comes to the different consonants and vowels, but there are many, many similarities. In fact, it is a rule of thumb expressed by Rav Sa'adya Gaon and Ibn Ezra and Rabbi Yuna Ibn Janah and all the great grammarians of a thousand and nine hundred and eight hundred years ago that um, Hebrew and Arabic are very similar in many respects and one can learn from one language to the other language and the alphabet is uh, for the most part common to both with few exceptions. That's one basic fact with which, with which we have to uh, deal and of which we have to be aware. Another basic fact is that it is, it is agreed by all that there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, starting with Aleph and ending with Tav or Tau. It is also agreed to by all, and it is stated explicitly 
in Sefi Sira, which is uh, an ancient text. It doesn't make any difference at this point uh, who wrote this text. The basic fact is that we do not know. But it is an ancient text. Uh, suffice it to say that Rav Sa'adya Gaon, in, in his Hakdama, uh, in his introduction to his commentary on Sefi Sira, uh, writes that this is an ancient text. And Rav Sa'adya Gaon himself was born in the 9th century and lived into the 10th century. So if in his day it was an ancient text, it is, this is obviously a very ancient text. And if it says anything at all with regards to the Hebrew language, then it is of great importance that we know what it says and understand what it says. So it states in Sefer Yasira, and I quote, Perek Rishon Halacha Gimel, chapter 1, uh, Halacha, or clause 3, in the uh, edition that I have in my hand here, uh, with the commentary of uh, Rav Sa'adya Gaon, translated by uh, Mori Rabbi Arab Yosef Gafe Zal. It says as follows, Esrim Ushtayim Othiyoth, so it begins by saying there are 22 letters, and it goes on to say, Sheva Kefuloth, and there are seven that are double. And it goes on to say that those seven Kefuloth are Beged Kaporet, that is to say, the letters Beth, Gimu, Daled, Kaf, Pe, Resh, and Tau. This means, in simple terms, when we have 22 letters and seven letters which have a double pronunciation, which we will presently explain, that means we have altogether 29 uh, consonantal sounds in the Hebrew language. And as we will go through the, the list of consonants, it will become apparent that for uh, most Jews, of those 29 consonants, 10 simply do not exist. That is to say, 10 consonants are unknown to a great many Jews in the world, and this is very tragic and most unfortunate. But on the other hand, it's also something that we can rectify uh, rather easily by simply opening our minds to the fact that there is a problem here and understanding how this problem came about and uh, being willing to hear and uh, internalize the truth and act upon that truth. So we have 29 consonantal sounds. Let us begin at the beginning, therefore. Aleph is, as everyone knows, the, uh, the sound that is understood by, uh, to be represented by that letter. And all the Jews, all uh, Eidot, all the different communities around the world produce uh, that, that sound in the same way. So therefore we do not need to discuss it at length. The next letter is Beth. Beth is one of those seven letters with a double pronunciation. The way we distinguish between one version of a letter and the other version, that is to say the hard version and the soft version of that letter, or the plosive version and the fricative uh, version, fricative coming from the word friction, so it is produced by, the, by air passing over a certain part of the throat or mouth, the way we distinguish between these two uh, types of letters is by the dot, the dagesh, which is either present or absent in that letter. So when the bet has a dagesh in it, as we all know, uh, a bet is, a, is exactly equivalent to the B in the English language, in the Roman alphabet. And when there is no dagesh in that letter, uh, in the bet, it becomes a veth, and therefore it is identical with the V in English or in, uh, in the Roman alphabet. And this is understood and known by all Jews who are familiar with Hebrew, all Jews who are taught to read Hebrew are aware of this distinction. The next letter is Gimel. Gimel is also one of those seven letters, Beged Kaporet, uh, which has two pronunciations. And this is something that many Jews uh, are not familiar with. When the Gimel has a Dagesh in it, the Gimel is pronounced as a G. That is to say, as the double G in the word egg, or as in the G in the word goat. As opposed, in this case, to the Temanite pronun pronunciation. The Yemenite pronunciation, by and large, there are a few exceptions amongst the Temanim, temanim themselves, but by and large, the Temanim pronounce the Gimel, the Rusha, the Gimel with a dot in it, as a J, that is, as a J in English, as in the word jolt. And this, uh, for many reasons, is, can be pronounced to be incorrect. 
uh, it happens to be the case that Rav Sa'adya Gaon, who, uh, as I mentioned before, was born in the 9th century and lived well into the 10th century, who was one of the greatest minds the Jewish people has produced, one of the greatest scholars, sages that the Jewish people have produced, uh, certainly over the last uh, 11, 1200 years without a doubt, is, is universally recognized as a tremendous scholar in the realm of the Jewish language, Hebrew language, and uh, grammar. He writes in his commentary on Sefi Yitzirah, as we mentioned a moment, uh, this book a moment before, a moment ago, here on page Kof Yod, that is 110, he speaks about the different letters, and <coughs> on page Ein He, in his Perush, this is in chapter 2, uh, Halacha Bet, clause 2, he says explicitly there is no jinn in the, in the uh, Hebrew language. In other words, he is comparing the Hebrew alphabet to the Arabic alphabet, and he says on this point, the Arabs have a consonant, that is to say a J sound, which we in Hebrew do not have. This clearly contradicts the Temani pronunciation of the Gimel de Rusha, of the Gimel with a dot in it, and this supports the pronunciation of the rest of the Jewish world, that is to say all the Sephardim and all the, Tem and all the uh, Ashkenazim, I should say, who pronounce the Gimel with a dot as a G, and that is the correct pronunciation. I should mention here that Rav Sa'adya Gaon uh, states more than once in his uh, Perush that any sound, any consonantal sound, which is in effect two sounds uh, placed together and pronounced as it were as one sound, or in other words a, a consonant which is not a pure consonant but a combination of two, is not considered a, a Hebrew consonant. And he gives the example uh, also amongst others of the jinn. The j sound is actually a d, a d sound, combined with a je sound. The de and the je together become a j. This is not a pure consonant. And Rasad Yegaon states explicitly that any non-pure consonant, any such combined consonant, is not to be considered one of the essential consonants in the Hebrew language. As for the gimel harufuya, the gimel without a dot in it, this is pronounced as a rimel. Rimel, as in the Arabic, there is a letter in Arabic with the same sound. And uh, this is, for example, how the Arabs, instead of saying Aza, as we, as we do when we refer to Gaza, they refer to it as Gaza, with a rimel at the beginning. Or, if you, for those of you who recall, uh, the uh, uh, ambassador, uh, the Egyptian ambassador to the UN, I think he was, or the foreign minister, or both, I can't remember exactly, his name was Butros Ghali. Ghali is exactly that letter, the beginning uh, at the beginning of the word of, of that, his surname is Ghali with a rimel, which is written usually in English, represented by a G followed by an H, the H being intended to soften the G. So here we have an example of a consonant, which for most Jews is a, uh, a question mark, is a mystery. They're not familiar with it. On the other hand, it is not very difficult to pronounce. And it should be pointed out that it's not very far from the French pronunciation of the letter R, uh, which is something that many people are able to produce. And in fact, it's not all that different, slightly different perhaps, but not all that different from the Ashkenazi pronunciation of the letter Resh, which uh, in traditional Ashkenazi pronunciation is not Resh from the front of the mouth, from the tip of the tongue, but rather from the throat, it becomes a Resh and therefore a rimel and a resh are not very different, different at all. So it is not true that most Jews are incapable of pronouncing this sound. If one puts one's mind to it, it is definitely possible. We move on now to the next letter, dalad. Dalad is again one of those seven letters, beget kaporet, with a double pronunciation depending on, on the presence or absence of the dagesh. When it has a letter, uh, I'm sorry, dagesh in the letter, it is a d as in the English word dog, and uh, there's nothing difficult about that, and all uh, Jews all around the world, from all backgrounds, all communities pronounce it in that fashion. When the dalad is rafui, where it has no dagesh in it, it is pronounced as a th, a dalad, 
and this is exactly as the th in the English definite article the is pronounced. This is what's called a voiced th as opposed to an unvoiced th. An unvoiced th we'll learn about later when we get to the letter tau at the end of the alphabet. But the voiced th is is like the word the, and this is also something that is should not be difficult for most people to pronounce. Certainly, it cannot be difficult for an English speaker to claim that he or she is incapable of pronouncing this sound. And that is exactly, by the way, how one is able to live up to the halakha, as stated in the Talmud, Masechet Barachot, and as quoted in all the Posakim, regarding the pronunciation of the word Ahav at the end of the Pasuk Shema Yisrael. One is supposed to be ma'arich be'ahav, one is supposed to pronounce that last consonant in a lengthy fashion, to dwell on upon it. And if one pronounces it as a dalad, as a d, which is a plosive sound, and therefore by definition cannot uh, be lengthened, it is impossible to live up to this halakha. One cannot say ahad any, for, any, for any length, because one is, what, is, what one is really doing, if one does so, uh, if, if one is misled into trying to lengthen a D sound, one ends up with pronouncing it as an N, or a D followed by an N sound, a nasal sound, which is not at all the, the intention. A dhalad, on the other hand, one can pronounce th, as, as I just did now, as long as one has breath. And that is exactly the uh, intention of the Talmud when it speaks about expressing or pronouncing that last uh, consonant of the word ahad at length. He is, of course, the equivalent of the English letter H. And this is, again, not difficult, except for the fact that uh, many Israelis uh, happen to have the unfortunate habit of uh, not pronouncing a He as a He and pronouncing it as an Aleph, as if it's an... And instead of saying Hine, they actually say Ine, and, and, simil- and, and, and the same for many other words in Hebrew. And this is unfortunate, and there's no excuse for it, frankly, and it is definitely incorrect. The next letter of the alphabet is the letter Wow, usually understood by most people to be the letter Vav. But as we pointed out previously, the letter Vav, or the sound V, the V sound in Hebrew, is represented by the Beth without the dot in it, when it becomes a Veth, as it is pronounced by all Jews. And of course we do not need the same consonant uh, in the Hebrew language, and the Hebrew alphabet, to appear twice. It makes no sense that there should be both a veth represented by a beth rufuya without a dot and also by a vav. And this is, of course, not, not correct. The vav, in fact, is not a vav, it is a wow. This is confirmed by all the ancient authorities Rav Sa'de Gaon, Ibn Ezra, uh, Rabbi Dunash, uh, the famous uh, author of another perush, another commentary on Sefer Yasira, uh, Rabbi Yonah ibn Janah, and many others. And therefore, this letter is uh, exactly identical to the W sound in English, which sound, of course, also exists in Aramaic and also in Arabic. And again, no speaker of any language in, where the consonant W exists should have any difficulty pronouncing this sound. The next letter is Zayn. This letter pr- uh, apparently produces no difficulty, causes no uh, confusion. For any Jew who is familiar with the Hebrew language, it is exactly identical with the English letter Z, and the sound is clear, the Z sound, and uh, it only has one form. The next letter, which I as a child was taught, uh, is identical to another letter in Hebrew, namely the Chaf, and therefore I was taught to pronounce it as a Chet, is not a Chet, but rather is a Het. The heth sound is a sound which is, it is true, it has to be admitted, is not common in many languages. It is definitely a Semitic consonant. It exists in Aramaic, it exists in Arabic, and exists in Hebrew. And all Jews from Arabic-speaking countries throughout history have always pronounced the sound that way. And I also, by the way, have no doubt that if we went back a thousand years or something like that in Europe, Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi Jews at that time, I'm sure, also uh, were able to pronounce the sound correctly. But over time, it somehow got lost. There are certain indications 
which I won't go into now, in some ancient Ashkenazi texts, including Rashi, that they were familiar with some, of, at least some of the sounds that we are discussing here today. But over time, they, they got lost in the shuffle, in the linguistic shuffle that the Jews underwent during the very long Galuth, as we mentioned before. So the correct pronunciation of the letter Heth is Heth and not Cheth, which is definitely a mistake and uh, needs to, something which needs to be corrected. Following the letter Heth, we have another letter which may seem challenging to some people, maybe in, even to many people. It is, a, a, again, a Semitic consonant which exists in Arabic, in Aramaic, but not in uh, European languages, and I refer to the letter Taith. It is not identical with the last letter of the alphabet, with a Dagesh, with a dot in it, namely the Tau. It is not like the T in English, but rather it is a, a stressed and uh, somewhat guttural T sound. If you want to think of it as being represented by two or three T's pronounced together, but with the tongue uh, being pushed up towards the roof of the mouth, this is how the sound is pronounced. This is something which has to be practiced, perhaps, when one is not used to it but it is not really as difficult as it may seem as at first, and the sound is t, not t, but t. So the, an example of, uh, of such a, a sound uh, would be the Hebrew word letagen, to fry. Not letagen, but letagen. The, the, the toith is deeper and more guttural and more stressed. After the letter Teth, we have the letter Yod. Again, Yod is again one of those letters that represents no challenge or difficulty for anyone who is familiar with Hebrew. It is the uh, familiar sound of the Y in English. It is a year, and it is always uh, a year without exception. And uh, with that, we have completed the first ten letters of the uh, Hebrew alphabet. And you will note, and I, I say this in conclusion, uh, that of those, just those first ten letters, we have the we have the gimel, the, that is to say, the gimel without a dot, the gimel refuya. We have the valid, which is the dalad without the daresh, and we have the wow, which is the the letter vav, as some people call it incorrectly, and we also have the letter heth and the letter poith. These just in the first. 10 consonants of the Hebrew language, we have 5 consonants, 5 out of 10, uh, or if you want to add the, take into account the doubles, we have the 10 consonants plus we have the bet uh, uh, and the gimel and the dalad, which have 2 sounds, so we have to count them as, as uh, 13. 5 out of 13 is a very high proportion of consonants to have been lost. And this will, I think, do for our discussion today. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org